Welcome to the Shepherd's Morning, where we as God's people rise with the Lord, rely upon His Holy Word each and every day of our lives. I want to thank you for coming to join me this morning as we gather together to hear how God can lead us and teach us and grow us in Him. Join me for a moment, my friends, in prayer as we open up to the Lord. Holy God, bless us this morning and lead us by your holy word, that we might know you, Good Shepherd, with us, leading us from the dark places of our life to the higher pasture, the fields of glory in our Father's house. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's see, we have today, we are reading, what is today, May 3rd. I see... John 16.33. Very good. In the world ye shall have tribulation. That's the truth. Charles Spurgeon writes this. Are you asking the reason of this believer? Look up to your heavenly Father and behold him pure and holy. You know that you are one day to be like him? Will you easily be conformed to his image? Or will you require much refining in the furnace of affliction to purify you? Will it be an easy thing to get rid of your corruptions and make you perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect? Next, Christian, turn your eye down. Do you know what forces and foes are beneath your feet? You were once a servant of Satan, and no king willingly loses his subjects. Do you think that Satan will leave you alone? No. He will be always after you, for he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Expect trouble, then, when you look beneath you. Now look around. Where are you? You're in an enemy's country, a stranger and a sojourner. The world is not your friend. If it is, then you are not God's friend. For he who is the friend of the world is the enemy of God. Be assured that you shall find foemen everywhere. When you sleep, think that you are resting on a battlefield. When you walk, suspect an ambush in every hedge. As mosquitoes are said to bite strangers more than natives, so too will your trials of the earth be sharpest for you. Lastly, Look within, into your own heart, and observe what is there. Sin and self are still within. If, if only you had no devil to tempt you, no enemies to fight you, no world to ensnare you, then you would still find in yourself evil enough to be a sore trouble for you. For the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Expect trouble then, but despond not on account of it, for God is with thee to help and to strengthen thee. He hath said, I will be with thee in trouble. I will deliver thee and honor thee. Mm. I forgot to play today's little music in the background here. Let's get some of that going. I actually prefer it when it's not me talking, but we'll do that now. What Spurgeon writes is the truth. The world has troubles. I don't know about you. I can see it. When Spurgeon paints it as war, he's not wrong. He says you have a spiritual enemy. You do. 
He says that people can't even be trusted. Not always. He says you can't even trust yourself. None of us are without sin. So what are we to do? That's the real question, isn't it? We can sit there and write and read and talk about all the problems, but what are we to do? What Spurgeon wrote was the truth. But if we stopped at just the troubles, we would be left without hope. Spurgeon put right at the end those last two sentences that God is our hope. I want to go further. I want to say, let's instead start looking at what Jesus thought about all this problems in the world. I think it's important that we first say that the gospel narratives affirm what was said. But like that tagline that we see on a Billy, what is it, Billy Mays commercial? But there's more. You see, we're assisted in the spiritual battle by God's angels. The world's assisted through the hands and feet of Jesus, his body. Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? You and I are the body, the church. Our souls are guided and convicted by Holy Spirit that we might know and receive salvation through Jesus. So yeah, the world has trials. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, times are hard. But stating that only focuses on the problems where people who are visionary, who see the solution. God. You know, God. The one who made you and me right from the very beginning. Who made everything. The one who chose to make you in his good image. God. Who made the world and it was good. Who made the animals and they were good. Who made humanity and it was very good. God's entire creation is an act of love. And then our human choices chose to muck things up a bit. That's the nature of sin. It's what results from it. Life that doesn't look as glorious as it should. Whenever we put our choices and our plans before God's word for us, that's the inevitable result. It may take an hour, a day, or a thousand years, but it's what comes. Right now, the world may seem dark, but there's light. It may feel like a war zone, but God's the Lord of armies in the plural, not one. It might feel like you're alone, but I would say hear the voices of the saints in the foxhole nearby. Maybe they're singing. Maybe they're singing to bring you hope. The world's broken by us, not God. And here's the beautiful thing. Like a parent with a child, when God came to fix it, even though we were the ones that broke it, he chose to love us so much that he says, let me show you how to fix it so that we can be part of setting it right. And he gives us power, his strength. He gives us light, his truth. He gives us guidance, his spirit. He gives us hope, his son. There may be a lot wrong, and the world may be dangerous. But you and I don't need to be afraid. In the darkness, the light is with us. In the battle, we bring peace. In the storm, we get to be the calming presence. Searching for music for your next video? I'm definitely not searching for that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Our hearts which were empty, are now filled with a desire, but not one of our own. See, we were so filled with our desires that we walk in that brokenness so often. But now, we get to be filled with Holy Spirit. We get to do the Lord's desire. That means we become 
healers. The reality around us is still changing, but we're the ones changing it. The world seems at war, sure, but the Prince of Peace has already won. The world cries out for help. And God inside us starts nudging us, you and me, to go. The Good Shepherd, who is the gate, who keeps us safe inside it and also leads us from it, bids us go forth. We, the sheep, going out amongst the wolves. How will you and I respond today? I don't know about you, but long ago, I found comfort when I finally submitted and just said the words, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Now that's how I respond. It's transformed life. It's no longer my life and my decisions that got me where I was. Now it's God's desire and his choices that bring me to not only where I am today, but where I will be tomorrow. I hope you can say those words and respond that way as well. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Brothers and sisters, don't let yourself be overcome by darkness. Instead, overcome it by being a light bearer. Others. Don't just seek it for yourself. That would be selfishness. That would be our decision. Instead, ask, God, how can I carry your light forward into the world? Bring your goodness there. You might be surprised at how he shows up, how he blesses you, what he does in your life as he transforms the world through you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I'll see you in the morning.